Uh, welcome. This is the uh, morning meeting of the uh, House Appropriations Committee to finish up some final work on the budget adjustment before we do a proof read. Um, as always, there's a couple of loose ends that need to be tied up, and we have six of them. And um, I'm confident that we can <clears throat> get to resolution and uh, and proofread the the uh, document and vote out still at two o'clock today. Uh, Steve had uh, some things when uh, JFO were working on the document last night that um, that needed to be brought to our attention. Uh, one piece is that there's more revenue uh, at the end of the fiscal year than than is um, than it then shows on on our then our then then shows on our uh, budget adjustment. There's an additional um, two million dollars from the attorney general's office that needs to be reflected, and three million dollars from DFR. Steve, do you want to speak quickly to those two pieces? Are you there, Steve? Um, Maria. So, yep. Yeah. Hi. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so when the governor gave us his FY21 recommended budget in the C section, there were some increased direct apps. And so what we've done is add those to this budget adjustment bill. So that money would be um, realized and that there were three things. There was the Vermont Life magazine for 375,000. I think that's just a residual amount in that account. The, you heard testimony about this a while ago, but it was so long ago that maybe you haven't remembered it. Um, Two million dollars from the AG's office from reimbursements, and then there's a three million dollar item from DFR. Um, in addition to that, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. In addition to that, you'll see in um, this budget adjustment that you're working on today, the four hundred thousand that was. Um, identified from the Secretary of State's office. And we have to be, remember to add to the total list of revenues the $10,000 freed up from Boys and Girls State and the $25,000 freed up from the USS Vermont Commission. Oh, that's right. We, yeah. Yeah. And so those, all those um, six numbers added together is 5.8 million, 5.81 million to be precise. Um, and so that's over and above what we, we saw when the governor gave us his supplemental budget adjustment numbers, although they're not all new numbers because they were in the governor's FY21 recommended budget in the C-section. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Mm, Thank you. Thank you for that, Maria. Um, um, I, I just assumed that those numbers had all been resolved when, when we um, received the governor's proposal. So thank you for your office for finding that catch. So the committee um, the before that we had talked about the 400,000, the 25,000 for Vermont and the 10,000, we were going to drop to the bottom line because we do have a deficit hole of 143 million in taxes that will be deferred that are not guaranteed. They'll come in at 100%. Um, so it, it's not like this is just additional money. We have a, a pretty big, uh, a pretty big bill at the end, depending on what comes in with taxes. So what would the committee like to do um, with this new total? Do I have any um, recommendations from a committee member? Peter, your hand is up. Sure. Um, yeah, I recommend we we uh, use that to offset the uh, the decline in revenues, uh, i.e. the bottom line, so that we don't have to use as much funds to close the budget at the end of the year. Okay, so would, that would be just to simply drop it to the bottom line and then Correct. the CFR dollars or the reserves, whatever, do not completely cover it. These would be part of the dollars um, that would cover it. If, if all that tax money comes in or, or even more than what this would do would roll over then to 21 for us to use. Them. Are right. there any other thoughts, Marty? Uh, yes, I agree. It should, it should just be considered extra income that goes to the bottom line that would help balance the whole budget <clears throat> on that worksheet. My only concern is if indeed we're talking a little bit later on about the water quality issue 
and we get to the point where the water quality fund, the water clean water fund is down to zero because we haven't deducted as much as we thought. We can still make the adjustment in DEC, but it would mean some of that additional income would have to be used to balance the bottom of the budget. If you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. We followed that, except I don't know all the committee members because this other issue that I called you about, Marty, I haven't been able to circle back yeah. with all the committee members, but we will get to that one and then and then what you said will make some more sense to them. But um, it'll make more sense, yes. It's a relatively you. small amount compared to the five million that we have in extra money. You're right. That I agree in principle should go to the bottom line. Thank you. Uh, Chip. Uh, I agree. I, I think the for me the first order of business is to you know put whatever money we have on the bottom line to try to not use the reserves any more than we have to. Um, that said, I don't know if it makes any difference if um, if Steve if the, the possibility that Steve brought up yesterday about being able to use the CRF money um, as a bridge as a a loan basically or a bridge um, if that would change what we do and they're asking you a question uh, oh, sorry, sorry. So I'm not actually asking you a question I I was just saying <laughs> to the committee about whether if the possibility of using the, the CRF money as a as a bridge um, to get into the next FY 21 if that comes true, does that change anything? I was really just asking the committee. No, I, I don't think so. I think the advantage of this just what you're doing is you may have to use less CRF money for a bridge, but in the end result, you're gonna have to repay the CRF money. So, and what, what this will do is when you come back in August, you'll have more money on the bottom line if there's any left over to help you, as you all said, with the FY21 bill. So I think this is a very appropriate thing to do. And I agree with Peter and, and Steve. <laughs> Okay, um, any other comments? So um, we have a proposal on the table uh, from three members. Um, yeah, I just is anything that Marty was going to talk to us about important for us to hear now or could that wait? I don't, I don't know. Um, we, let, let, let's put it on the table now because I, I don't, I'm hoping that it does not end, um, does not impact any of the end of year construct um, Marty, do you want to talk about the, the newest issue that arose with the Clean Water Fund? Or do you want me to outline it? It's up sure. To no, I think I can. When we saw the um, spreadsheet that came from water quality, remember there was a, a spreadsheet with pink and green lines on it that described where the decreases in income were and how they would that sheet of paper yes and how they intended to make up the difference uh at, which would be using some unobligated funds from vtrans accd and dec the dec amount was seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and it outlined the specific areas where they would take it from and i ran that by natural resources committee and they looked at it and and then they came back and they were quite concerned with one of the items that was suggested to be um, reduced. And that was $100,000 for the La Rosa program, which is a water sampling program that is done in the summertime by volunteer groups. And then the samples go in to be analyzed so that they know what water quality is in various lakes and ponds and streams. Um, <clears throat> Frankly, I did not question that from when the secretary suggested those five different areas. I thought they all sounded reasonable, but I admit I did not dig into exactly what that La Rosa program was. I had assumed that the secretary had looked at it and felt that it was an appropriate place to cut the funds. There has been a lot of concern from the Natural Resources Committee, however, that that's a program they would not, they would like to see not cut um, because they consider that very critical. My first response was, well, in order to make this budget balance, the DEC needed to find 750. 
So if DEC could find 750 in a different way, that would be fine as far as we were concerned because on the big blue sheet from Adam, all it shows is 750. So far, the secretary has not suggested any alternatives that she could use to make up that amount. And there is still discussion going on, I believe, between the natural resource chairman and the secretary to see if number one, they're all alternatives, or if we indeed fund this last item and don't cut $100,000 or don't cut $83,000, we could use the what's left on the bottom line of the clean water fund, but that literally depletes all of the clean water fund because it's using all the, this, this sheet uses up all of its unallocated money from last year plus its contingency fund. So we would either, we would be either at zero for the clean water fund as of the end of BAA. And then of course we have a new year um, or we just cut. Um, and by doing that, we would be, we would be cutting less. Or what I just mentioned before was since we have this, uh, that would leave the clean water fund empty, but we have other funds that would help balance the full budget. And that was, what was I referring to the 5.8 in so-called extra found money that we have just said would go to the bottom line, but perhaps less of that would go to the bottom line if we need to make the total bu budget balance. Thank you. So it, it's a question to me of if, if that particular item is critical enough and important enough that we want to find some way of keeping it by either finding a substitute for it or spending the money and leaving the clean water fund with no balance at all. And so really at play out of the total 750 in DEC is the $100,000 La Rosa. <clears throat> La Rosa um, it's a, a partnership with, with communities with swimming holes and ponds and lakes and streams as Marty um, outlined. I, I, I was hoping it would be as simple as, as identifying the 83,000 to, to go toward the $100,000. But according to the treasurer, the, the secretary this morning, and Marty would have been part of that call if she had an iPhone that we could merge her in. <laughs> it, it, this, what, this all happened within about 10 minutes. And so to set up a Zoom meeting, we were running out of time. Um, the, the, this partnership- right would be reduced, um, but it's not simply about the money. There is also, you know, the, the um, how much capability that the lab had uh, during this time and the stress on the department with COVID-19 and other areas that they are being pulled at. And so as we speak, um, natural resources, the natural resources chair and <clears throat> Julie Moore are talking uh, to see if there is some language that they can come up with that, that satisfies both of them that could be forward. And I'm hoping we will get that in about a half an hour. That's my hope. Um, so that is, that's all we know. On the sheet that we received, um, part of the confusion was Julie came in on a Thursday morning. This decision was made Thursday afternoon. And um, so that's one reason, you know, a cut in the program uh, was not laid out at that time because I think Mary asked about cuts. And so the decision had not been made at that time, but I did relate to the secretary that this is a budget adjustment and typically we do not do programmatic changes unless there are emergencies. And, and I, I did take the blame for, um, I always look at things in fiscal year and in the subsequent note that came from the uh, secretary, she did mention um, <clears throat> that there would be a reduction uh, in the 2020 field season and that they would resume all activities in, this, in, in, in fiscal year in 2021. Field season means, now I've learned something, Memorial Day to Labor Day. So it would be a complete cut in the 2020 calendar year. And I was working off fiscal years. So we have that those two groups are working on this and hopefully we'll come to resolution. 
I have uh, Mary and Dave and Kimberly, did you have another question? Yeah, I guess I just, I, that makes sense. I'm just wondering if in this motion we should allow any space for that potential resolution to. Good idea, good thinking, yeah. And I think Marty included that, but I hadn't put it out there. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, Mary and Dave, Mary. So I'm confused. What is the question before us? Uh, the question before us is that we would take the additional dollars that um, that need to be reflected in the budget adjustment from the Attorney General and Vermont Life Magazine and uh, DFR and um, to bring them to the bottom line to go against the, um, the tax deferral money that we may owe a piece of if it doesn't all come in. And if it doesn't all come in, that it would go to fiscal year 21 to help with those budget issues with the caveat that we need to um, hear about the resolution from natural resources on the La Rosa money. So I, I certainly understand about dropping the excess revenue to the bottom line and support that. I thought we were also discussing whether or not we would fund the clean water monitoring program, which I must note is a 40 plus year old program that monitors water quality by volunteers throughout the state. It's a really fabulous way. And, and Bob, I bet you know about this. I think this, you know, I, I think I remember having conversation anyway. It's an interesting program and I had not understood from the testimony that they were considering eliminating it for the year. And I am very concerned about that. We also had not heard about the stress on the staff. So I'm at a little bit of a loss for how do we um, regard that proposal. So at this time, um, the, the chair of natural resources and the secretary of um, are, are working on exactly how to move forward because this is a priority for the Committee of Jurisdiction to continue this program. You know, the so, contracts um, yeah. need to go out and, and there was some question about, you know, could they get these contracts out with, with you know, the pressure on the staff and, and natural resources said, well, these contracts have been going out for years and years. <laughs> it, it seems like they they're working it out right now. There's a big back and forth. Um, both, both groups want to get to a resolution that... that oh, can and is there any reason not to use the $83,000 that's on the bottom line of the Clean Water Fund? I spoke to Emily Byrne and she said that could be made available. So that would be the first thing to do, I would right. assume, and then fill the gap with... You know, well, there may not be a gap, a gap because they're getting a slow start to the program anyway right. because of COVID-19. Uh, okay. But the secretary, after I spoke with Emily and, and the money could be made available, the secretary said it's more than just the money and then went into the other pieces. And so yes. that is why um, Amy and Julie are talking now to see where they can come to a resolution, I'm hoping. Thank you. Dave? Thank you. I'm trying to determine whether it's a uh, uh, symbolic or material in terms of what's left on the bottom line of the clean water fund. So if we if we um, do the cut, there are funds that will be left uh, in the clean water fund. And if There's we don't do it, and we we restore yes, there will be eighty three thousand. Yes. If and that's if we do the reduction. No. Yes, if we, do if, we do, if we take the extra money, then there will be nothing on the bottom line of the Clean Water Fund at the end of um, okay. fiscal year 20. And, and, and yes, and it gets restored by tax income that comes in. The next but year. Traditionally, they have been able to carry over a million and a half from one year to the next and another half million in a contingency fund. But this so year, they, they would have to use all of that, literally. Right. In, and we would be literally at zero for next year. But is the question whether we have 83 or zero? No, um, the 83 right. could, be made, could be made available to help uh, with the La Rosa partnership. Um, what the conversation now is, 
the money is there, but do they, does, the, um, does the department have the capacity to get the work done? Okay, because in, I'm sorry, in my mind, it was a question whether there's zero in the fund or 83, and that seems de minimis anyways, 83. And I, it seemed like we were trying to leave some funds there for symbolic reasons. But it's more than symbolism, I take it. Yeah. And um, well, I think it was just that the secretary felt she could pull 100 out and that you. would leave 83. But if we don't pull the 100 out, then yes, we're just at zero. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Meta? Um, my question goes back to the, uh, the, the uh, I guess, motion that is before us. And um, exactly what the total amount, even keeping in mind that this clean water fund issue, I heard listed last time there was a listing of the money, the, the money from Vermont Life and from DFR and from the AG's office. And that's what, but I did not hear reference to the money from the Secretary of State's office, the Yes. Um, USS Vermont and Boys and Girls State. So are those last three being held out no, they're and all automatically? They're all together in one total for $5.81 million. Okay, so all of them are indeed together. That's yeah. all I want to double check. Thank you very much. Kimberly, you, your hands up. I forgot to take it down, sorry. Nope, that's okay. And Mary? Um, so sadly, I, I feel the need to also kind of argue the other side of this problem. So I, I feel really strongly about the clean water monitoring, the lakes and pond monitoring program. It really is fabulous. We have also said that special funds of which this is a part live and die on their special funds and that we have not. So we are not subsidizing the transportation fund, the education fund. And I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about moving what will become general fund dollars into the clean water fund to make up for this deficit. So here's the classic Mary arguing on the one hand and then on the other hand, sorry guys. But it, it, we do have an ability, uh, special funds are allowed to carry deficits and if they can move the 83 to cover, if, if they can work it out and it makes sense to continue, they can move the 83 and they can carry the 20,000 which all seems small change when we're talking about a a uh, fund that normally has what, $51 million mm -hmm. in it. So it's a small issue, but no. there is a principle here, I think. It, it's the, it's the uh, project, the, the project itself that is a priority, I, even though it's uh, small, in, small in numbers compared to other numbers. I, I understand. I'm just saying that they ought to pay for it out of the clean yep. water yep. fund. Mm -hmm. And if there's not money, in this current year, they can they can pay the whole amount. They can carry a twenty thousand deficit into twenty one, pick it up, and cover it if it can be worked out. And I, I see um, Representative Sheldon back on the line, but Marty, you had your hand up, and and then I'm hoping um, Amy that <coughs> you and the Secretary have come to rescue. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I just wanted to clarify for Mary that the clean water fund is not 50 million. The clean water fund is 15 million. The other parts that we talk about that get spent on clean water does total 50, but the actual clean water fund typically has a balance of 15 million more or less. And so this would be a, this would be a, a if we used it all, it would just be down to zero and it would get uh, replenished with whatever the clean water surcharge and the sheets money and the rooms and meals tax that come in next year would help part, fill that up again. And we would figure out the budget of how to spend that or the clean water board would figure out the money of how to spend that. Thanks, Marty. 
So um, we're going to yeah. jump from um, where, where we were with the end of year um, dollars that have come in to, and stay on water quality because Amy, you're back on and I'm hoping you've had an opportunity to, to talk with um, Secretary Moore and can give us an update. I, I can, yes, thank you. Um, so I, I came into your conversation when, when Mary was speaking the, the most recent time. And thank you for taking this very seriously with us. This, um, I did have a good conversation with Secretary Moore and we've come to an agreement that will probably make you all relieved. But um, so we're, we're proposing that this budget adjustment remain as it is. And I have a commitment from her to work with me on what a reduced um, La Rosa partnership support would look like given the fact that the field season is different this year and that money could either come from the 83,000 or it would be part of the next fiscal year budget. And so she's gonna text both um, Kitty and myself and articulate that in, in writing in a text, but that's where we have come to. And it makes sense in understanding um, where she's coming from and the, just the constraints and the changes happening because of COVID to the field season. Um, I think it's important to know that they had come to um, a place in the program where they had um, their awards notices prepared to send out right as we were all transitioning to remote work. And they decided um, to hold all of their you know, grant money. And this was one of those things they held in anticipation of it. Um, and then they just had they found their way with what to do with it. So those projects were ready to go, but they were sort of dependent on a spring field season starting in May, and that was unable to happen. So what I would like to see is that pro groups that are that need to continue monitoring for contact recreation like E. coli and are able to do that, have access to the state fund to allow them to do that. And so I don't know if that's exactly what we'll come to, but instead of pulling all the support for these groups that have been doing this for many, many years um, in one fell swoop, we'll at least be able to offer something uh, to some of them. And that's, that's where we came to. Okay, so then we would not reflect any changes in the bottom line. Do we need to uh, take the project balance and, and do anything with that? Or can we just leave it on the bottom line of the Clean Water Fund and, and they can make those changes within their shop? That's, yes, that the latter, we can leave it the way it is. Okay. So um, do we have agreement from the committee to leave it as it is and that the Natural Resources Committee will work with the Secretary of um, ANR and forward um, with the La Rosa Partnership Program? Mary, do you have a question? No, I have a statement. Um, so that makes sense to me. It, it, it's a reasonable solution, but I really hope that we will see in the FY21 skinny bill, a proposal for how we move this forward, which means next week or the week after so that we don't lose it entirely. So it's, I, I can support this with the understanding that we're going to see a proposal for the reasonable reductions that they're having to have now. Thanks. So oh, any, any changes will reflect in the skinny bill. Yep. Okay, Marty, you will, um, if there's questions on the floor, Marty, I think you can handle them all now. But Amy, if there's something that we don't understand in your conversation with the secretary, you'd be willing to um, clarify on the floor? Sure. And I just, if I may, want to just say that, you know, my committee wasn't aware of this. Um, and so we, we haven't been able to as assess the situation. And so it's just unfortunate that it wasn't brought to us sooner. We've historically expressed a really strong support for this program. And so, it, you know, it would have been good to know sooner. Obviously the caveat being everything's different now and, and people are, turned upside down during the COVID. But. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. And, th and thank you for- Thank you, Amy. So quickly. Thank okay, you all. So just a quick show of hands that we'll just continue with the Clean Water Fund as is in this other conversation will we'll sort itself out elsewhere.
Okay, those that support this, raise your hand. And those of you who do not, put your hands down. Anyone not support this? Okay, then we'll continue on with the Clean Water Fund. Um, and then uh, then we let's go back to uh, dropping the, um, this does not impact the uh, dollars that are going to uh, be reflected in the budget with a total of 5.81 million. And we had, a, I think three different members talk about just dropping it to the bottom line to offset any deficit or move to fiscal year 21. If you support that, would you raise your hands, your flesh hands or your blue hands? Okay, I think we're good with that. Um, the, the third um, thing that we needed to look into, um, um, Steve, on the reserve language, but we had never seen it. And so it would be good for us to see it before we do our proofreading. Uh, he had talked yesterday about the possibility of CRF dollars being allowed to be used as a bridge. If they cannot be used, then we have our reserves to use as a bridge um, using the proposal from the administration. Teresa, do you have that language you could put up for us, please? So I don't know what language you're talking about. The reserve language with um, using the CRF reserves as a bridge for the- sent them draft I don't have that. Do yeah. you want me to come back to that while you find while you get the Where, line? Steve, here's the draft. Did you send the intuition? Yeah, Becky sent it to me. Oh, yeah. So is it section um, 29 and 30? Teresa so has five to watch it's them. It's section 29 and 30 of the draft. Okay. So if you have another device, um, Teresa has sent out the draft. And I'm looking. Or what, what, what time did she send it out? I don't see it. Did we send it out to the committee or not? Yeah, yeah, it has been sent out um, this morning. Uh, we can send it again. How about that? We'll send it again. Did the whole committee get it or just, just Teresa? Okay, just Teresa. Teresa yeah. has it. Okay, well, we're going to send it again right away. Do you know what? We'll wait for the until we can put the language up on the screen to respond to. Let's move to another section, Steve, okay? Okay. So let's talk about, um, you brought up about the legislature, definitely we're going to be working past the 18 weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, you thought that June 19th looked like, which gives me pause, uh, June <laughs> looks like a likely date before we can take a break and what those costs would be. And since we know that we should reflect it, do you wanna talk about those costs, Steve? Yeah, there are two changes in the mm -hmm. CRF. That's the first, which is, we, um, we're basically moving into overtime. We basically budget for 18 weeks and June 19th would be five more weeks. And so at our spending rate of 150,000 a week, that would be $750,000. And we, we think after the conversations yesterday, that's very, um, uh, wait, hold on, uh, Teresa wants to know what section. It's uh, 29, 29. 29 and 30. Yeah, so, um, so that would be 750,000. What we would do is either we can put it as a subsection to the legislative one or just add it to the 500,000 and make it 1.250. This would be money that would go into the legislative budget um, to cover those costs of the uh, FY20 costs. And it would mean we wouldn't have to use state dollars for the, um, to cover that extra time. And it would allow you for more flexibility for use of state dollars uh, when the, the um, this sort of CRF money is no longer available. Should it be reflected separately, Steve, because the other dollars are a blend yeah. the JFC we're going to sort out. And so if we um, reflected these separately, they could go directly now. We could appropriate them to the legislature's budget. I was thinking that would be a good idea, is to appropriate them separately right to the legislative budget. How do committee members feel about this? Are there any questions to Steve? Uh, we'll go back to this language in a minute, um, Teresa. We're going to we're, we're going to finish up the one fifty. Uh, uh, Mary, oh. you're muted, Mary. I just want to say no, so that we don't have to work till June nineteenth to <laughs> solve that problem. <laughs> it, it it may be a week earlier, June twelfth, but we just we. I hate to say it, but I thought June 19th was probably more accurate. Okay, um, any other comments or questions about that? We know it's an expense that's coming up even though um, it's a date that we typically don't work to. 
if uh, just as quick straw poll, if you're good with doing this as a separate item and, a, and, I, and appropriating rate to the legislature's budget, raise your hand. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, now, Teresa, can we move to the reserve language? Because we, we only talked about it yesterday and we didn't get to see it. And since we're meeting, it's a good time to see it. Yeah. Maria, are you going to walk through this with us? Or uh, I think Steve, Steve or... is. Okay. Well, we were going to ask you, I was going to make Stephanie, but I'll be glad to. So, uh, <laughs> use of general fund reserves. Um, so, uh, section 29 basically unreserves the three excuse me the three funds the this is the um uh the balance reserve the second is the uh stabilization reserve and third is human service caseload reserve so that would be the order that we would access them rainy day first and stabilization second and human only, services only case load third yeah, and it's only to the extent necessary but um that, that would be the order then there's this b provision should federal assistance to states be available, including the ability to utilize interfund borrowing uh, from the coronavirus relief fund, uh, then we would, um, uh, such funds shall be applied to allow the, to reduce or eliminate the need to utilize provisions of subject in A. So we're basically saying, if that money is available, then don't do the use of the reserves. And um, we think it's available. This is sort of a, uh, I had a brief conversation with Adam, um, and uh, we haven't completed that discussion, but this basically says, if you can use the CRF money for this purpose, use it first and don't use the reserves. The advantage of, just one of the advantages of that is in 21, you'll find uses for those reserves. I think, that, um, and we can go into more than that in the 21 bill. Then it goes to section 30, which basically talks about the deferred tax payments. And um, it says the extent that the payments are deferred that we receive them through August 31st, which is basically all of uh, July and August, um, that first, to the extent any interfund loan was made by the coronavirus relief fund uh, under the provisions of section 30, subsection B, you would basically use an amount to, is it say relay rather than repay? It's supposed to say repay. It's supposed to say repay. I think we have a <laughs> slight word. Uh, in an amount to relay the balance of the interfund loan. So we will repay that. Okay. Um, and then second, um, and then it says, then it's got all the things we repay the reserves in the same order, uh, human service caseload well, reserves. I don't uh, think they're in the same order though, Steve. You have you had the rainy day first before. Right, what it is is we're using them first rainy day, then stabilization, then human service caseload reserve, and we're repaying them. Oh, we're paying order. them differently. Okay, yeah, I see. In the opposite order okay. so that they, again, the priority, the last thing that gets repaid is the rainy day fund. Right, 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 thank rainy. you. Last in, first, you know, last yeah. out, first in type of yeah. thing. <laughs> and so that's the that's the end of the year language. And then it says, uh, uh, then it says, finally, any any additional amounts received from the such payments shall remain available in the general fund for appropriation in FY twenty one. And that's what you just talked about. Mm -hmm. If the money comes in over this, it'll be there for you for FY twenty one. Hey Diane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Steve, though, I'm just, I get a question around the August 31st date. Yeah. And A, because there's been speculation of the, the July 15th date moving. Mm -hmm. And that, that was where I was like, I was wondering if we need to put in or give ourselves the flexibility of 30 days after the, or how many days after the, tax deadline then then if this it really, changes oh, sorry. yeah i'm sorry go ahead you get no, it this this is a really good question for you all to decide about we were torn because part of it was um we want to give you some uncertainty if you come back and have to deal with this bill you'll know sort of where you are um you're right i mean what if they postpone the right. date of repayment of september then right. then we may want to just say uh in, and you may want to do it in your bill in 21. You might say, this additional money came in and we're going to reflect, we're going to use it to pay off the reserve balance we're using. Because the worst case would be the, the federal government postpones it until, from June, July till September or even later. Yep. And what happens is that you really haven't repaid the loan. You've just, or in this, or 
you've had to use the reserves to uh, uh, you wouldn't be attributing that extra money and you will have that option in, in 21. I, I actually, you know, I don't think there's, it's whatever you want to do. I, this was just okay. one attempt to have a point in time, but you could certainly extend it to a, even a later point of plan. We can give you a progress okay. report. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on mute. I'm there saying Marty, Marty, Marty. Oh. <laughs> I was on okay. mute. I, I like the language the way it is, Steve. I wouldn't want to extend that out any further. I think if we get if we get out and the tax payments don't come in, I would feel more comfortable in just playing using the reserves and okay. then fill it later on when we can. I wouldn't want to leave that hole sitting there forever. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marty. Um, Mary, my third hand is up. For, for, from the discussion and the description, this makes sense to me. My problem is I can't read the whole document together and to really understand it. So I sure would appreciate if we could have this sent to us so that we could read it. I mean, I can't, I, I can see what you're showing me, but. Uh, so I believe that uh, Trina is sending this document to you. I, um, yeah, that's what needs to happen. So that then you can take it and um, review every section of it. And then we'll get back together at three o'clock and talk about um, your questions or observations. Yeah, I, I just think Kitty, you're going to ask us, do we accept this in general? It totally makes sense to me. I want to accept it. I would just like to be able to read it before I say yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Yep, let me- uh, Thank you. As soon as I'm done screen sharing, I'll send it to everybody. Okay. And just one other thing I want to flag in the um, language that uh, is would be worth noting. What this does is it still has you adding money to the stabilization reserve in FY20. So um, there was at one point a thought that why well, add money to the stabilization reserve in FY20 if you're going to take it. But at this point, since we may not be taking that, we are we're meeting that sort of need to keep a five percent reserve in FY20 with the understanding you may take money in FY20 to meet the shortfall. And uh, so you'll the, these numbers reflect the full reserve in FY20, including the sort of additional money you would add for the, the fiscal year. And if that's really confusing, I'd be glad to let Stephanie be more. <laughs> more. No, and um, that, that is true. Originally, we thought maybe you don't, you don't do the transfer in and we notwithstand that. But the, the um, Adam actually had not, he was still having the transfer go into the stabilization reserve in his, his construct as well. So. so yeah, so we're transferring in by, as we would by law, we're filling the reserve and then it'll be available if we need to to, to the five percent. Yeah. For the, yeah. Okay. Um, Diane. No. Uh, Peter. So Steve, are we going to be adjusting the five percent based upon the new reality, or is this the five percent budget stabilization reserve the way that it was before coronavirus hit? So Five percent always applies to the previous year's total appropriations. So five percent uh -huh. for twenty applies to FY nineteen, gotcha. and five percent for uh, twenty one will apply to twenty. And so the state, assuming that we actually have to cut something in the neighborhood of two hundred sixty million dollars out in twenty one, it means the stabilization reserve might go down by that five percent in twenty two. So it's always gotcha. that sort of one year time lag. Thank you. Yep. Which means that it would also need to, um, if, if, if it goes down in 22 and 23, then we'd have to jump it back up to the new reality, we hope, if we had a good one. Yes. Okay. So I've been told that um, Teresa's slippers come off and or whatever, uh, she, in, she has to be in another meeting in 10 minutes. So I guess yep. we only yep. have so two more little going, things. What we're going to do is... Um, uh, are we are we good with the August thirty first date, or or does the committee feel that that needs to be pushed out? Um, I, I think I would just take a quick raise of hands 
if you are good with the August 31st date, could you put that down, Teresa, so I can see everyone's hands at once? If you're good with the August 31st date, would you raise your left hand? Okay, um, I have a majority there, so I'm, I'm going to uh, take that. We can read, the, read through the language. Um, I think it was explained pretty clearly, but having it in front of you where, where you're not seeing half at a time does make a big difference. And if there's some changes that we can uh, need to be made, we'll do that at two o'clock. But the basic premise of it, um, to use CRF dollars if available, if those can't bridge, then we go to reserves. We have a list to use first and then we pay them back uh, just the opposite by priority. <clears throat> the basic premise of it, um, how many of you agree with this premise for the flesh hand? Okay, then, then, then we agree with the premise. If anything needs to be tidied up, we can do that at two o'clock. It's actually not three, it'll be at two o'clock. Okay. Yeah. We have two the, other the, that we have. One more thing is the Beth Pierce one. I don't know if you wanna. Yeah, we have two other things we have okay. to do. Let's do, um, um, the treasurer brought um, to the attention of JFO last night that as there are additional dollars being paid out to state employees, either in overtime or in, and types of hazard pay, that this uh, will have an impact on the retirement. What section number is that? It would be um, greater numbers than they, than they would have it's Section 34. Section 34. Yeah, yeah. so we, are, we did in section 34. Maybe after you get your draft, you can look at it. Okay, and I'm going to keep explaining while you're looking for the draft in section 34. And what this does is it would allow the uh, Corona relief funds to be used for those additional burdens placed upon the retirement system. Compared to the whole system, it's a small amount, but it is an additional impact because of overtime and um, hazard type pays um, that have gone out to state employees. And you can read that quickly and see if there's any uh, questions and this was just brought to our attention last night by the treasurer. Is there anyone who has a question on why we would do it or how it is worded? Mary? Um, sorry, why joint fiscal and why don't we appropriate it instead? when it's in 21. Well, this is uh, not joint fiscal. This is just, uh, it says the state treasurer shall make a determination and um, what the expenses are for FY20 and then uh, any amount will... Uh, Should we, oh, she's just oh, reporting. Oh, that's a separate... Uh, reporting to joint fiscal. They're, they're just oh, gonna just report. Reporting. Uh, report and treasurer shall report to joint fiscal. Yeah. Okay, she's just gonna tell. Okay, yeah. thanks, yeah. sorry. Anything else? So if I could go back to a full screen, um, committee members that would be willing to accept this language in the budget adjustment, if I could have a show of flesh, a show of hands. Okay, it looks like we're good with that. The last piece, Peter, could you speak to very uh, quickly uh, regarding uh, Vermont State Colleges and UVM? You're, you're muted, Peter. Sorry. So I know precious little about this other than the, the Adam um, does not believe that the room and board reimbursement use- He questions, uh, he questions it, not-, not Questions it. No questions. So, and that's just it. Whether we can use coronavirus relief funds to, to uh, make whole the room and board issue at UVM and the Vermont State Colleges. Um, I believe the best thing to do here is be we don't have, there is nothing, I reread the, uh, the, um, the facts, the frequently asked questions, et cetera. There's nothing in there that says exactly that. I don't see anything that, that, dist that says you can't do it either. I recommend we leave it in uh, use of coronavirus relief funds. Maybe we'll get better clarity as, as the Senate deals with this, perhaps not. I, I honestly, this is COVID period. So that's all I got. So Peter's recommending we leave it as is, and if something changes with the interpretation of the rules that it could be um, switched out on the Senate side, 
uh, Peter and the Joint Fiscal Office both um, are fairly, more than fairly confident that it is a related expense. So are you, are you all okay with Peter's recommendation to leave it? Raise your hand. Okay, uh, Teresa has another meeting in five minutes and the doorbell keeps ringing for those people to join her next meeting. We will meet at two o'clock um, and, and um, please take this time to proofread the document. If you see any changes, don't wait until two, send those to Maria and Teresa to get those changed. And we'll take a vote at two. Okay, so I'm gonna go off the live stream. Perfect.